They are, this is most of them, um, corn oil, cotton seeds, soybean, safflower, uh, rapeseed oil, peanut oil, canola oil. They're all relatively new. Um, the history of our cooking fats was not seed oils. These are the fats that we cooked with. We cooked with tallow that came from cattle, suet, which is from um, ruminant animals that comes around the organs, uh, lard, which comes from pigs, and butter. These were the main cooking fats in the Western world, really the only cooking fats in the Western world. Um, lard used to be popular. <laughs> And I know that you're kind of thinking, well, what about olive oil? Didn't people cook with that? But when I uh, was researching olive oil for my book, I found out that it actually it is not an ancient food stuff. It was used as a, for medicinal purposes. It was used to anoint the body to make your muscles glisten in battle. But it was not really used for food and cooking until, uh, the, until the 19th century. In Spain, this is, is a reference to in Greece, um, this, what this archaeologist found. But it's also true in Spain and in Italy that there really is not evidence for use as in the culinary sphere until the 1900s. So olive oil was used um, not so much. So uh, what oils used to be used for was, um, as an, was as a lubricant for machinery in the Industrial Revolution. I mean, one of the main reasons that we hunted whales was to get whale oil. It was tremendous. That the oil from whales was the main product that we got from them, and that was used to lubricate the vast and growing amount of machinery that was, uh, that was fueling the Industrial Revolution. When we hunted out all the whales, or most of them, the Americans in the South who were growing cotton, uh, they discovered that cotton seeds, which was a byproduct of their crop, could be crushed into oil, cottonseed oil. A saturated solid fat like butter, which is the top molecule here, you can see that it's a straight molecule. And, that, and, uh, and, that's, and so those molecules stap, they stack on top of each other very neatly, and that's why that is a solid, right? These other molecules, unsaturated fatty acids, um, they're unsaturated because there are many double bonds in them. You can see those double um, like equal signs along the chain there. They're squiggly molecules. They don't stack neatly on top of each other. Therefore, they have a lot of space between them, and that's an oil. So we're talking about unsaturated fatty acids. These are, um, in oils, it turns out that they're very unstable. They, um, they go rancid easily, they degrade over time, and so there was the great invention of being able to use oils uh, was to learn how to hydrogenate them. This was a process that was invented by a German in the early 1900s, and you could see it takes that squiggly molecule and, uh, and through a chemical process that I'll show you in a second, it makes it f it's straight and flat. So you can take an oil and make it, and make it f uh, a straight molecule that allows it to be hardened. It allows it to be a, a hard substance, I mean, a, a, so that all those molecules stack up against each other. This process of hydrogenation turns out to be a rather dramatic one. It involves pressure, heat, hexane, a solvent. It uses a metal catalyst. It has to be steamed to eliminate bad odors. It then has to be bleached to remove the gray color that comes out. When it's gray, it then needs to be winterized for stability and enhanced uh, with artificial colors and synthetic vitamins. It's a pretty extensive process. I've actually been inside of a hydrogenation plant, and it's just a huge, massive operation.